Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Anand, consultant medical oncologist at uh, Kasturba Hospital, uh, Manipal. Uh, and I'm here to give you a small talk on uh, colorectal malignancy. March has been the month uh, that has been uh, given for colorectal uh, carcinoma. And I would like to share a few uh, uh, details on uh, how it presents and what are the treatment modalities that we have uh, for this malignancy. Colorectal carcinoma is one among the top five uh, malignancies uh, in terms of incidence and mortality. It usually presents in uh, the elderly age group. What is more important is that there is an unmet need for uh, awareness regarding this malignancy and the modalities of treatment that the health infrastructure can offer. So uh, just to give you a small insight into what I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, it will be basically on uh, what are the risk factors for colorectal carcinoma, uh, what are the various uh, screening and diagnostic modalities, and uh, a general outline on uh, the treatment aspect uh, for this malignancy. Uh, to begin with, uh, 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 it's quite a general tendency to assume that uh, uh, all patients who have uh, bleeding PR, uh, bleeding per rectum, uh, to have colorectal uh, malignancy. Uh, in fact, uh, that is not the absolute truth. Uh, there are a lot of symptoms uh, wherein a patient can present uh, uh, without bleeding per rectum. Uh, colorectal carcinoma is usually found in the elderly, so uh, it is very important to uh, uh, ask for uh, the bowel habits of the elderly uh, to know what kind of uh, uh, daily bowel habits they have. So uh, definitely age is a uh, not modifiable risk factor for colorectal carcinoma. Similarly, a uh, strong family history of colorectal carcinoma, uh, uh, relatives of patients who have been diagnosed to have colorectal carcinoma in the younger age group or uh, more than two in a family. There are various uh, uh, risk stratification or uh, uh, what we say as uh, algorithm-based uh, models which can uh, uh, tell us whether an individual is at risk for uh, uh, colorectal carcinoma based on their family history. So uh, uh, a patient with a strong family history is at risk of uh, colorectal uh, carcinoma. Patients uh, who have, or individuals who have uh, history of colonic polyps, or uh, if they have uh, other familial members who have a lot of colonic polyps, they are at risk of colorectal uh, carcinoma. Similarly, modifiable risk factors like uh, smoking, alcohol consumption, obesity, uh, low fiber diet, uh, less of water intake, you know, wherein uh, the stools are usually constipated and, you know, the motility is less. Uh, th th these are some of the modifiable risk factors for colorectal uh, carcinomas. So it is very important to know that a lot of uh, health style uh, modification, a good diet, uh, a healthy diet with lots of water and fiber, uh, uh, you know, the chances of death, someone who doesn't have a significant uh, risk for developing colorectal carcinoma, uh, uh, can have a better uh, outcome or a better, uh, uh, you know, uh, risk, uh, you know, the risk naturally becomes less if they don't have a family uh, risk. Uh, so coming to how do we diagnose a colorectal carcinoma, most of the patients present with uh, constipation or altered bubble habit. Some people can present with uh, spurious diarrhea. Uh, constricting growth, uh, which is uh, which causes the lumen to narrow down, these patients present with a lot of constipation and spurious diarrhea. Many in the lower uh, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and uh, rectum can present with bleeding per rectum. Uh, abdominal pain is another important uh, factor when there's a constricting growth uh, in the uh, other segment of the colon. And when the uh, colonic malignancy uh, carcinoma metastasizes, then uh, individuals can have uh, li uh, liver dysfunction or jaundice, or uh, they can have uh, abdominal pain or uh, lung symptoms. Otherwise, the common symptoms are related to the colon itself. Uh, so once we uh, suspect uh, someone to have a colonic malignancy, the typical presentation is an elderly gentleman, 70-year-old gentleman who presents with anemia, uh, and is found to have occult blood loss. Uh, these are the patients whom we strongly suspect uh, colonic malignancy. So once we suspect someone to have a colonic malignancy, then uh, we need to diagnose it uh, uh, histopathologically for which we need a biopsy. So most of these patients undergo a, a initial examination to look at the uh, digital uh, rectal examination, 
to see whether there's a repel growth. They can undergo a sigmoidoscopy if there is a strong suspicion of a sigmoid growth. And most of them eventually require a total colonoscopy to look whether there is a, uh, there are polyps or there are growths elsewhere in the colon. So uh, colonoscopy not only helps us in visualizing the colon, it also provides us a biopsy which uh, documents or confirms the uh, malignancy. So once we know that there is a malignancy in the colon, then we need to stage these patients uh, to either operable colonic malignancy or metastasized uh, stage four colonic malignancy. So we need an imaging modality, which can be uh, a CT abdomen with pelvis or uh, in the case of uh, carcinoma rectum, uh, MRI pelvis, or for that matter, PET CT whole body scan to look for metastasis in the lungs and liver along with uh, evaluation for the primary. So colonoscopy, biopsy, and imaging modality form the ground framework for diagnosing a colonic malignancy. Then once we have a colonic uh, malignancy diagnosis proved based on biopsy then, and adequately staged, we need to decide on the treatment modality that uh, one has to offer. Most of the uh, general outline treatment is uh, surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. For example, if there's a rectal malignancy, uh, neoadjuvant radiotherapy is incorporated along with chemotherapy and uh, surgery uh, will follow that, followed by adjuvant chemotherapy if there's a residual disease. If it's a colonic malignancy from colon till the ascending colon, usually if it is a non-metastasized colonic malignancy, then they undergo surgery followed by adjuvant chemotherapy. So uh, uh, the general outline is to incorporate uh, the necessary modality of uh, surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy uh, in uh, the uh, management of colorectal carcinoma, depending on where the site is and what is the stage of the disease. Uh, once we know that uh, it is in the uh, non-metastatic uh, state, uh, the attempt is always to cure uh, depending on what stage it is. But however, if the patients have got uh, uh, metastasis to the liver or the lung, then we need to incorporate it, uh, targeted therapies, which can include uh, uh, monoclonal antibodies like bevacizumab, and it can be an EGFR antibody like uh, cetuximab or penetumumab. So it is very important to understand what stage the patient is in, <clears throat> whether uh, there can be any attempt of a curative resection or whether the intent is going to be palliative. So uh, uh, with this, I, I would like to summarize and tell you that uh, the management of colorectal carcinoma depends on uh, adequate uh, history and physical examination, a necessary uh, biopsy and a colonoscopic diagnosis, along with the imaging and appropriate management based on the uh, staging of the malignancy. Also, at the uh, same time, it is very much important to screen these patients who have undergone uh, uh, treatment uh, with curative intent in their uh, follow-up durations to look for whether any recurrence happens, uh, either uh, with colon colonoscopy or a fecal DNA testing, or for that matter, even a simple sigmoidoscopy may be sometimes adequate uh, when someone has got uh, uh, no polyps and only a, a sigmoid colon malignancy. But it is very important to monitor these patients for recurrence. Similarly, patients at risk, like for example, the relatives of the uh, patient who has been diagnosed with a colorectal malignancy with a strong familial uh, background, need to be screened for colonic malignancies, wherein you can uh, adequately test these patients for syndromes like Lynch or uh, familial adenomatous polyposis, you know, uh, either by colonoscopy or by doing necessary genetic uh, analysis. So that these patients can be kept under active surveillance and for, uh, to some extent, some of these patients can be offered total proctocolectomy uh, to prevent the occurrence of uh, the cancer itself. So uh, to finalize or to finish my talk, I would like to say that um, uh, a lot of awareness, uh, not only in the month of March, but uh, all throughout the year has to be given to patients and their relatives regarding the colorectal uh, carcinoma. Uh, they should be aware of the symptoms, they should be aware of the diagnostic modality, and they should uh, be given more information regarding the treatment modalities that can be offered, and also about screening and surveillance post-treatment. With this, I would like to thank uh, for everyone for a very uh, patient listening, and I would uh, uh, be happy to answer uh, any of the questions which can be asked. Thank you very much.